says if foundation is destroyed what can the righteous do faulty foundation will lead to destruction be sure your foundation is pure and true foundation to wisdom the house is built to foundation I understand and it is as the foundation Build your foundation on purity foundation is acceptable in the sight of the Lord foundation Don't build your house on faulty foundation my friend foundation There is joy there is success and true foundation foundation Jesus is the true foundation that lasts for heaven says if foundation is destroyed what can the writers do yeah. for the foundation will lead to destruction but be sure your foundation is for and true foundation whatever foundation you build yourself on today foundation will reflect in your life Tomorrow, oh, oh. foundation. Your future lies in your hand, my friend. Be wise. Foundation. But remember, what you sow is what you foundation. reap. Jesus is the true foundation. True yeah. Foundation. And in the true reward, foundation. Foundation. Foundation is destroyed. What can the righteous do? Excuse me, nurse. Can I help you, sir? I was told my wife is there. Uh, please, uh, can I see her? What's her name, please? She is Mrs. Sumade. Mrs. Teresa Sumade. Oh, Mrs. Teresa. Yes. We have been waiting for you, sir. Uh, nurse. Uh, please, I am Reverend Samuel Somade. Please, uh, how is she? No, I'm coming straight from Benin City now. I got an emergency phone call from my daughter that she's been brought here over the night. Please, I need to see her. Oh, thank you. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Rebecca. Oh, my God. What happened? Please, what happened? What happened to your mom? This is why your boy is. She's just trying to get some things. God, Rebecca, what happened? Yesterday afternoon, she started complaining about severe headache. She took some pain reliever, but she wasn't relieved. Later, the pain became unbearable for her. We did all we could. We prayed, we sang, we bind, and we lose. Oh, Jesus. Later in the night, around 11 a.m., she began to scream and roam painfully on the floor. And um, she had a terrible pain in her chest as well. And Dilly brought her here last night. Dilly drove the car. Dilly? Where is he? He has returned to the house since morning. Oh, God. Daddy, the, the doctor says, he also says it, it, it is important that you see him now. The doctor? Yes. Uh, please, nurse, where, where can I find the doctor? He's still around. You can come with me. Okay. Oh, my God. Jesus. Oh. Don't worry, don't worry. Sit here, eh? Wait, I'm coming. All is well, eh? Wait, I'm coming. Oh my God. <clears throat> Reverend, I'm sorry to say. It is not actually the case of uh, migraine or chest pain per se. By the test we conducted, your wife might probably be suffering from a case similar to brain tumor. <sighs> My God. How come? Well, we still have a series of tests to conduct. 
and we may have to refer her to some specialist too. Ah. Bring two more? Until we finally confirm. But our case is a serious one. How serious? Please, doctor, will she survive it? Well, let's be hopeful. It's good you are a man of God. Combine our efforts with your prayers. Oh. He said we should keep praying and hoping. Oh God. Jesus. <laughs> Getting better, right? Have you eaten? No. Ah. Since you came back from school, you have not eaten. I've not eaten since I came back from school. <sighs> I only had the apple that I saw in the fridge. Oh. By the way, where is Dele? I haven't seen him since I came back a few minutes ago. Dele! Dele! I saw him in the car when the driver came to pick me in the school. Then he dropped along the way. He said he wanted to see a friend. What? He wanted to see a friend when his mom is in the hospital? My God, what has gone on with this boy? And Ali didn't be anything for you to eat? Now listen, we have some visitors. I go into the nano bag I brought for my trip. You find a loaf of bread and a can cook. Go and take that. Yes. <sighs> mm. Yes, come inside. Ah, Pastor Loki. Ah, it's good you are here. Ah, welcome. It's nice of you. Well, I knew to Rebecca. I called mom's line. I asked to talk with mom, but she said um, she was on bed. So I, want, I wondered what happened to her. Uh, yes, I, I rushed back home when I heard she suddenly fell sick and I began to cry of a terrible headache. I was just thinking of uh, passing the cr news across to you. Um, Edda Toriola, Dr. Macaulay. Thanks for your concern. And how is she now, sir? Well, I just came back from the hospital. You're welcome, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, uh, Pastor Loki, I will need the uh, prayers of the um, Dickens and the elders in general. The doctor said my wife's case needs some serious divine intervention. Sir, how was your program being city? Yes, I, I led them in the middle of the conference. I promised Reverend Harry that uh, I will send my assistant pastor uh, to take up the message of tomorrow evening. Um, pastor Loki. Yes, sir. Uh, you are leaving for Benin City tomorrow morning. Um, you will stand for me um, at uh, the conference tomorrow evening. Uh, you can go with Edwards. Oh, Pastor Loki, what do you think? Um, well, actually, sir, that's why I'm here with these elders. Uh, how, how do you mean?
Pastor Loki. Uh, yes, uh, this letter may be shocking to you, but I'm sorry to take this step. You are leaving us. When have you been planning this? How? Why? Hey, Dr. Riola. Dr. Macaulay. Oh, this is too sudden. Are you aware of what Pastor Loki has written here? He said the Lord has directed him to leave the church and start a new church for the Lord. They are both aware, sir. Well, the Holy Spirit has been speaking to some of us in the church to share in his vision. And, for example, I and my family, we are going with Pastor Loki. Your wife is the president of the Daughters of Zion, the women team of the church. This decision will affect a lot of things in the church. Pastor Loki, you are my special right hand man and my assistant pastor. What? Should you take this sudden step? Uh, actually, Reverend, I've been struggling with this call for three years. And I'm beginning to feel that if I don't obey, I might die suddenly. All right, Pastor. All right. Um, can you be patient for at least three months so that we can put things in order and, um, and arrange for a befitting uh, sent forth ceremony for you? Ah, that won't be necessary, sir. You have in your hand my letter of resignation, and I've made the announcement yesterday evening in the church. What? Pastor Loki, why are you doing this to me? You have even got to announce to the congregation that you are leaving when you have not told me first. Well, I'm sorry I was pushed by the urgency of the calling and vision, sir. <sighs> All right. All right. Thank you very much. Dr. Macaulay. Reverend, sir. Are you also going? I wish to go, sir. I've paid over it, and I feel the Holy Spirit is leading my family and I to go in that direction, sir. Shut up! What Holy Spirit are you talking about? What ridiculous direction are you talking about? Holy Spirit? When you are languishing in a, in a one-room apartment with your wife and all your children, and this church stepped in, and paid all your rent arrears and moved your family to a decent three bedroom flat with two years advance payment. No spirit was leading you away from this church then. I got your job for you as a lecturer on the campus, Dr. Macaulay. You can remember that for more than two months I was making contacts with my lecturer friends and some faculty officers before you got the job you are doing now. You knew how we pray together several times when you were defending your doctorate thesis. We quenched the fire of the enemies. We subdued all the intentions of the wicked ones. I implore your wife as a church office administrator. And now you are comfortable, settled and blessed. And, 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 and suddenly, the Holy Spirit began to lead you somewhere else. Eh, hey, Dr. Macaulay? With due respect, sir, I'm so disappointed you deceived me. If God, you could claim to do what the Lord has done in his evening message for me and my family. In John 3, 27, sir, the word of the Lord says, a man can receive nothing except it be given from heaven. I, 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 I am not arrogating God's glory and honor to myself, Dr. Macaulay. All I'm saying is that we've been too close for you to do this suddenly without letting me know about it. I am very sorry, sir. It is the way the Lord has led me. So on behalf of my family, I want to appreciate your kindness and your support towards us. We'd like to take our leave, sir. All necessary documents and files have been placed on your table this afternoon, sir. Pastor Loki, 
Won't you be in church this coming Sunday? Um, sir, um, we'll be, I'll be starting my first Sunday service this coming Sunday, sir. I see. So you have gotten a place already? No. The Lord has given us a place, sir. Right. To God be the glory then. Well, we should be going now, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye. Greetings to mommy when she comes back. Pastor. <laughs> we thank the Lord, Pastor. It is the Lord's doing, Pastor. Yes. And it is marvelous in our eyes. Oh, uh, Pastor, I was there this afternoon myself. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. The building has been completed. All the painting has been done. All the plastic chairs have been well arranged. The place is taking shape, Pastor. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, no, 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 no. You see, actually, I discovered that, um, you know, 20 dozens will not be adequate for us. So I ordered for 30 dozens. Ah, don't worry, Pastor. It is a pleasure to spend for the Lord. <laughs> no, don't worry, Pastor. You see, my family and I have taken care of that. We have paid for all the plastic chairs. Ah, Barista. It's a great honor to have people like you sharing in one's vision. Ah, ah, Pastor, you see, you have been a blessing to us. You have ministered to us several times through your wonderful spiritual teachings and sermons. You have taken care of our spiritual needs. Several times when our, you know, senior pastor has not had time to take care of us, you know, he has traveled several times, so you were on ground to take care of our spiritual needs. So that's why when you spoke that the Lord has asked you to form your ministry, we knew you have heard from the Lord. That's why we could follow you. Yes, Pastor. <laughs> Thanks very much, Barista. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, just as you have instructed me, Pastor, I have also endeavored to speak to uh, some important personalities in our church. You know, uh, like Engineer Modi, the chairman of the building committee, and Mrs. Imadion, you know, and so many others. Pastor, I believe that we will have a full capacity church on Sunday, yes. Yes, they will all decide to follow us. No problem, Pastor. Ah, that's very great. Thanks a lot. I'm very grateful. <laughs> we thank God, sir. Uh, <laughs> once again, Pastor, I, I want to thank you you know, uh, <laughs> for making me the, you know, legal advisor to the new church and a member of the council. I am indeed very, very grateful, Pastor. <laughs> the Lord bless you. <laughs> yes, Pastor. <laughs> ah, it's all right, Barista. <laughs> well, greet your beautiful wife, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Pastor. Thank you. <laughs> I still don't think that what we have done is right. If you ask me, we shouldn't have followed this man. Huh? We should stay back with Reverend Sam. Come off it, honey. Stop being childish. Uh -uh. What are we going to do staying back in a church where most of the important personalities are, uh, have left? Huh? So what are people like us still doing back there? Well, I don't subscribe to this kind of game. It is dirty. If the man wants to start a church, that's okay. But he should not pull down another man's church before starting his own. It's not right. Who was that? Reverend Sam. Are you cut him off just like that? has been so good to us. Does he deserve all this? Look, honey, I am behaving as the Holy Spirit is leading me. Uh. Hello, sir. 
Mommy Okpe. Sir. Good evening. Please, is Barista around? Oh, my husband? My husband is... Um, hold on, sir. He asked whether you are around, and I can't lie. Sir, my husband is right here. Please, let me speak to him. He wants to greet you. Good evening, sir. Oh, good evening, barista. Can you believe what has just happened now? So I'm holding in my hand the resignation letter of Pastor Loki. He said he's leaving the church. He came with Elder Toriola and uh, Dr. Macaulay. I just called Dr. Uh, Engineer Modi now. He told me to my amazement that he is starting the new church with Pastor Loki. I am shocked at these developments, Barista. I just called to let you know that we need to hold an emergency elders meeting tomorrow morning. Actually, sir, I will not be able to attend that elders meeting tomorrow because uh, actually I have another meeting somewhere else, you know. Uh, so you need to excuse me, sir. Yes, Barrister Ruben. Uh, Reverend, sir. Well, I'm sorry. I forgot to ask you before we continue the conversation. Please, are you going also with Pastor Loki? <coughs> well, sir, actually, I am still praying about it. <sighs> My wife is terribly sick in the hospital. My son is living a life I don't understand. And the judge I labored for about seven years, us began to break apart. <sighs> I hope somebody will be nice enough to tell me where I have gone wrong. He switched off the phone. Switched the phone off, just like that. I hope you people know what you are doing. It's just unfair. Very, very unfair. Look, honey, shut up there. Shut up there. If you don't know what is happening, you better stay out of it and keep quiet. Uh -uh. My God. Where have I gone wrong? My wife. My son. My church. Oh, where have I missed it, O oh Lord? Where have I missed it? Dad. Dele. Where are you coming from? Can't you talk? I'm coming from the hospital. Mom is in the hospital. So... I went to see her, and... Ah. Dilly, your heart is devoid of the fear of God. You not tell lies freely. You left your mom and your sister and your spirit was in the money. You never cared what becomes of them. Ah, Dilly, you are taught the word of God. You are raised. Hope in the fear of God. You. What? What is this? I can smell beer. You drank beer? You drank beer? Hey, 
Stay, stay with her. I, I'm coming out. Stay with her. Mom! Mom! out to drink and part with friends. We start talk when all this is over. Take care of your sister. I'm coming. Foundation. True foundation. Things were not the way it used to be. I feel it. Like I've lost his presence. It was gradually diminishing until it finally faded off. I prayed. I fasted. I did all I knew I could do. To key in into his power. Nothing worked. Nothing. Dear. You've been talking to yourself in the last 30 minutes. Won't you sleep? I wanted to, dear. But my heart is full of great burdens, and sleep has departed from my eyes. I have just finished another 21 day prayer and fasting, and God has not yet spoken to me. He has said nothing. Hmm. Our ministry was a big one. It had branches in many cities and towns. We were on several radio and television channels. We used to receive invitations for conventions, conferences, seminars and revivals in many other countries with testimonies of healings and manifestations of spiritual gifts. <sighs> Our ministry was large. And we have many people in the congregation. Hmm. Until about seven years ago, when things turned backwards. Those are the thoughts that have been giving me sleepless nights. Hmm. Our ministry still exists in this city as if it is not. And God has not spoken to me and told me the cause. But why? We are, have I missed it? What have I done wrong? True foundation. After sharpening your teeth, you now want to use that teeth to bite me, eh? Pastor, you are trying to fold the umbrella that shielded you from the hot baking sun. Are you trying to curse me, sir? 
I served you all these years, and all I get as a reward is a curse. I am not cursing you, Pastor. You are my son in the Lord. I am not cursing you. I brought you up in the ministry. I grew you up in the service. I took you up when your parents cast you out and disowned you because of the gospel. I, 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 I cared for you. You ate my food and drank my water. I fed you spiritually and physically. You got your wife in this church. You married her in my, in, in my, in my church. You grew up in the ministry until you become a system pastor. I place you over. Excuse me, sir. You are my father and the Lord. It is true. You brought me up. Yes. But sir, with due respect, I'm so disappointed at you this afternoon that you could arrogate your, to yourself and claim to do all what the Lord out of the grace and mercy have done for me. The Lord did it, sir. But he used you just as you could have used somebody else. The Lord could have used somebody else, but he chose to use me. Pastor, I placed you over a branch of the church, and after the church has grown so big, you went ahead and changed the name of the church and changed the administrative structure of that church and registered that church in another, in another name. I did not change the name. The council of elders did. The branch you sent me to pastor was a small growing church. So I knew how I labored before the people had grew the building. The building was pulled down and rebuilt to the present cathedral. So the council of elders who knew how the money was raised and how those equipment and instruments were bought were those same people who thought it wise in their own wisdom to change the name of the church. Are you now saying that that church is no longer under the ministerial jurisdiction of our church? According to the decision of the Council of Elders. <laughs> I now learned that you are now referred to as the senior pastor, general overseer of the new church. Well, sir, that is how the Lord has directed us. Hmm. But you know it, son, that you are building your house on another man's foundation. If the Lord has led you to start a church, do you have to start with the member and the building of another man's church? No, sir. My foundation is pure and sure. I am starting with the members of pastor and with the building I be together with them. My son, <laughs> but you are making a very terrible mistake. No, sir. And I advise you to retreat from this fruitless journey. No, sir. It is a call of God upon my life and the voice of man cannot turn me back. But your foundation is faulty. Says who? Opinions of man hold no ground where the Lord has decreed. Why are you so arrogant? I grew you up in the ministry, but I did not plant this seed in you. Yes, you might have brought me up, sir. But however, at times, there comes a time when Eli's eyes usually go dim, and some spiritual and divine information are passed over to Samuel. What? You are saying that to me? Are you now trying to compare me with Eli, whose spiritual eyes were going blind? Well, sir, it depends on whatever interpretation you give to that simple biblical analogy. Son, you said that to me? So God has now bypassed me to pass to you some important divine information? Eh? Do you know Elisha? Yes, I do. But what about him? He parted with Elijah with double portion of anointing. 
But do you know Geazi? Yes, of course. He parted from Elisha with leprosy. No, sir. That is not my portion. Are you trying to curse me, sir? I am not cursing you. You gave me the parable of Simon and Heli, and I gave you that of Elisha and Gehazi. No, sir. As a bird by wandering, as a swallow by flying, so a curseless curse shall not come. Son, what is today's date? Today is 7th, July 7th. What has that got to do with this? So that you could know today's date down, eh? You are very, very unlucky indeed. Very unlucky. No. So that you can not today and start counting as from today. Because that ministry you start shall not prosper. It will prosper in Jesus' name. It will prosper. I placed you over the church seven years ago. And it has grown so big. You then stabbed me in the back and you converted to yourself. You broke my heart. You convert that church to yourself and embarrass me before God's people. In seven years' time, you will reap what you have sown. Lie! Surely, no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any definition against Israel. He that digs a pit shall fall therein, and he that breaks an hedge, serpent shall bite him. Get out of my office. I will leave, sir. But no costless curse shall stand in my life and ministry. Leave. I said leave my office. Excuse me, staff. Yes, can I help you? Please, what's the time? The time? It's just midnight. Five minutes after midnight. Uh -huh. The date? What is today's date? Yesterday was six. Today, I mean, we just entered the 7th. 7th July. Excuse huh? me. Huh? Huh? July 7th? Oh! Oh my God. It cost me. The man cost me, and everything he said came to pass. Oh, Jesus! Jesus! Oh, you have shown me where things had gone wrong. Oh, the foundation. The foundation! Oh, God! What next? What next, Lord? What next? What next? Me, sir. The doctor would like to see you now. Huh? Is that so? Foundation. <sighs> True foundation. Doctor. Oh, Reverend. Her situation is getting worse than I think. She has gone into a deep coma. I'm afraid we may have to transfer her to a specialist hospital before it is too late. Teresa, why now? Why? I know a storm is raging violently, but you don't have to go with this storm. We have to fight it and overcome it together. You mustn't die. Teresa, you can't die. But Reverend, how come none of your elders or deacons or even church members have not come to check on her? I am a Christian. I believe in corporate prayers. You need some of your people for a time like this. Teresa, I have known the cause of this storm. But you don't have to go with it. You can't die. You must not die, Teresa. You can't die. You can't die, Teresa. No. Foundation. 
Teresa, why now? You can't die. You must not die. You can't die. You can't. You can't. Yes, I have known where I missed it. I knew all along, only I was running away from the truth. Something that always told me down in my heart that I had to correct the foundation on which I built my ministry. But I had always ignored it. He said I robbed him. He said I stabbed him in the back. He said I broke his heart when I did the most unexpected thing and converted that church to mine. And eventually made it the headquarters church of my ministry. He tried to correct me, but I was too heady, supported by my wife. Come inside, please. It just not locked. Ah, Daddy, Mommy. You're welcome, sir. Welcome, ma. Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Good afternoon. Please, have your seat. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes, Teresa. Uh, she's inside. Mm. And this is a very nice place. We didn't even know you have changed where you live. Yes, ma. Thank you very much, ma. <sighs> Pastor Sam. Yes, sir. I am not comfortable with all the happenings around you of recent. Happenings? How do you mean, sir? <laughs> For the past seven months, you have stopped sending reports to me at the headquarters. No financial reports, no ministry reports, and all feedbacks have stopped. Since you started the reconstruction of the church. You have completely kept us in the dark. The Assistant General of Asia wrote you three times to ask for detailed explanation and information. But you refused to reply. Why? Pastor Sam, I'm waiting. Well, sir, we are engaging in some restructures, and um, we intend briefing you about it when we are through. <laughs> I've been long enough in the work of the ministry, son. I know what is cooking. This is the spirit that befalls many of the present-day young ministers. They always find it difficult to dig a solid foundation for an enduring ministry. They always find it very hard to walk in the same way their fathers had walked. Well, I, I don't understand what you mean by your inference, sir. You sure do. You are only surprised that I have reached my conclusion so quickly. Hmm. Son, don't do it. Don't do what? Don't break away. A breakaway branch always falls back to the ground. Even when one is sure the Lord is leading? Exactly what many of them usually say. But will the Lord lead a man to build his house with the blocks he has dismantled from another man's building? Will the Lord lead a person to build his house upon another man's foundation? If the Lord is leading you to start your own church, it will be my joy. But don't start on a very faulty foundation. Call your wife for me. I need to talk to her.
But that is surrender. Mm -hmm. <sighs> I know. I even heard some of the things he said. I know he will ask you to go and call me, believing I should be able to convince you. Hmm. Welcome, sir. Hmm. Welcome. Good Welcome. Afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Sit down. Thank you, sir. How is the work of the Lord? The Lord is faithful, sir. Hmm. Good. We thank God. I have just finished speaking with your husband. I told him that the enemy is trying to sow a strange seed into his heart. I don't think so, sir. Is that so? You don't think so? So, what do you think? Teresa? Yes, sir. Tell me what you think. I believe the Lord is leading him, sir. To break off from this church? Well, at times, sir, some things are necessary for the essentiality of the expansion of the kingdom of God, sir. Is that so? Including building on another man's foundation and not trying to discover the divine pattern and digging a solid foundation for an enduring ministry? I never said that, sir. Or starting a new church with the members and the building of the former church? I don't understand what you are trying to say, sir. Well, I have advised your husband mm -hmm. not to travel in that direction. Please, don't do it. I am not fighting for the members or the building or the money that comes out of it. No, I am not. I am only concerned about your ministry, about your life, about your ministry future. Let everything be done decently and in order. I need his forgiveness. And I need his blessing. The break of branch is gradually dying according to his wise words. The branch is drying and devouring insects are setting him, causing calamities. Oh God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lord. How do I get him? Where do I find him? Sit up. I have not slept since we finished praying. And why? I don't know. But I think later I knew. What is it? When we finished praying, 
I felt like praying more. So I was praying. My mind suddenly went to a Bible verse. I opened it. I opened it. I read it. But it didn't make any meaning to me. Suddenly, it struck my heart like an arrow. And what verse is that? Matthew chapter 18. <coughs> okay. Matthew 18. Verses 34 to 35. Thirty-four to thirty-five. Okay. And his Lord was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors, till he should pay all that was due unto him. So likewise shall my heavenly Father do also unto you, if ye from your hearts forgive not every one his brother their trespasses. Dear, did you see anything in it? Did you see what I saw? I didn't see anything significant in this verse. <sighs> what is it? I think I now know the cause of our terrible situations. And what is it? Dear, are you not being tormented? Oh, somehow. In some way. And when? Did you think this started? No, oh, six or seven years ago, things just started to go downward. Yes, it's as if we have been living under a closed heaven and walking on a ground of brass. Mm, yes, yes. We are no longer enjoying His presence. His anointing has greatly depleted the manifestation of spiritual gifts have ceased. There has no longer be any utterance for the world and His blessings have stopped coming. All this started seven years ago. Mm, yes. 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 Because the Lord has delivered us into the tormentors. Why? Till we pay all that was due unto him. Who? Ah. Who? Reverend Sam. Reverend Sam. Yes. Reverend Sam. What did he host, Reverend Sam? What, what? What did he owe him? Exactly what Job hold, Helipas, Bildad, and Sofa. His three friends who betrayed his confidence during his trying moment? Yes, yes, they are. Now listen to this. Listen to this. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Reverend Sam, and I need to pray for him. Dear, yes. We hold him and his wife, our prayers and forgiveness. But what do I pray for? His ministry is doing fine since he left us. His ministry has branches in many places. The headquarter church, which he took away from us, has even grown so big and extended to the adjacent plot of the land. His wife has nursery and primary school. So his ministry is blessed. So what do I pray for? Ah, oh, dear. Remember. Remember you caused him. You caused him in the heat of your anger. You caused him. I caused him? Yes, you did. 
I never remember that it caused him. All I knew is that I've never been happy at what he did to me. Twice, he had invited me to his convention, but I refused to honor his invitation. Once he came to my office to pay me a visit, I refused to see him. I never remembered I caused him, but I knew I have never forgiven him. Hmm. I think that is where we missed it all along. And the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. And the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had. I never knew I caused him. I know I have never forgiven him since he left. I have terrible bitterness and hunger hidden in my heart against him and his wife. The Lord has promised to turn our captivity when we do the right thing. So, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, what do we do now? Since we know his office, let us go to him. We? Going to his office? But he's supposed to come to us. Ah, yes. But we are the one in problems, not him. Is that the office of Ispa Evangelical Missions? Yes, sir, and I'm the secretary. Oh, good. Uh, very good. Uh, please, ma. I I've tried several numbers before I got this one. Uh, please, may I be on to uh, Daddy, Apostle Lambert? Your name, sir? I am Reverend Sam. Reverend Sam Sumadi of the Holy Way Ministries. I'm sorry, sir, you can't be on to him now. Oh, please, ma. Uh, sister, it is so important. I wish to book an urgent appointment with him and possibly see him today. Uh, he has not been around in the office this morning and I don't know if he will come. Oh. All right. However, I can deliver your message to him when he comes. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. You are welcome, sir. Oh. It's nice seeing you again. Ah, me. The Lord told us to come and pray for you. Ah! Ah! The Lord actually told you to come and pray for me? Oh, my Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You saw my heart going in distress. And you went to tell your servants to come and pray for me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Ah, Daddy. Mommy. I'm sorry. I'm sorry for all I've done against you. I'm sorry. 
I, I, I betrayed your love and trust. I stabbed you in the back when I conspired with few headers to claim the church and broke off from under your spiritual covering. I'm sorry. I know the foundation on which I began my ministry was wrong and faulty. Everything you said was true, but I pretended as if they were not. Things have begun to go downward from me. The curse you placed on my ministry has been raging as a violent storm. Please, Daddy, pray for me. Bless me. I'm turn away this raging storm from me. Please, Daddy, pray for me. Please, Daddy. <laughs> From the depth of my heart, I pronounce this over you. The bonds of affliction and agony are removed from over your life, Amen. your family, and your ministry. Amen. And henceforth, may you be like the tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. You shall bring out your fruit in season. Amen. It shall be well with you. Amen. It shall be well with your family Amen. and your ministry. Amen. Everything around you shall favor you. Amen. The favor, the goodness, the mercy and the grace of God shall compass you about. Amen. It is well with you. Amen. Amen. Oh, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you. Sam. Yes, Daddy. <laughs> I was afflicted too. Hmm? The foundation on which you began your ministry was a faulty one mm -hmm. when you did what you did. Mm -hmm. But I did a terrible thing to In the heat of my hunger, when I pronounced those evil words over you, and I refused to forgive you, I laid a new foundation for my ministry, and it was a faulty one. Mm -hmm. So, what is happening today is a healing for both of us. But, Daddy, I, I cost everything. I cost it. <laughs> <laughs> um, when he called those boys to bring in the things. Ben! Wale! Bring in those things! Um, those things are past, part of the process. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh. Yes. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Pack the yams. Pack the yams there. Mm -hmm. Pack the yams there. Okay, this one and the yam. They are just small gifts for your wife. Oh, thank you, Dad. By the way, where is Teresa? Yeah. She is in the hospital. Hospital? Yes. The doctor said her condition is critical. Ah. Well, what happened? Effect of this storm, that. <sighs> okay, um, we need to see her gently. Yes. We must see her gently. Yes. Oh. Let's go. We must see her. Thank you, Orissa. Let's go. Orissa. <laughs> Thank 
Back? Yes. I've been waiting for you since morning. Thank you. Oh, doctor, any improvement? She's sleeping? Yeah. Let's just hope things are getting better. Her house got closed a few moments ago. She is sleeping. Thank you. Oh, doctor, you asked for some of my people. Yeah. So I brought them. These are uh, my parents in the Lord. They brought me up in the ministry. Uh, please come with you, sir. Please come with you. We are very grateful. Thank you for the cares. Thank you, It's my pleasure. Please excuse me. Okay. Yes, sir. Let's pray. Theresa, I break the chains and bonds of death and affliction over your life in Jesus' name. Amen. I pronounce that you shall live and not die. Amen. To proclaim the works of God. Amen. I pronounce healing upon you. Amen. Receive life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Mommy. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. So, Sam. Yes, sir. When is your next convention? Oh, Daddy, uh, our convention is in three months' time. There's something terrible that just happened. What is it? Some of my trusted um, elders and deacons just pulled out of the church, oh. including my associate pastor. Son, you cannot avoid that. Storms may blow off the leaves and break up the branches. But as long as the tree is standing firm, mm -hmm. rain will fall again. Yes. And another leaves will shoot out of the tree. Amen. Branches will come forth from the tree. Yes, yes, Only dry leaves and weak branches break forth at the slightest storm. Mm. Mm. Invite me to your next convention. Mm. I yes, offer sir. to be your guest speaker. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I want that. I want to thank you, sir. Daddy, Daddy Gio. Daddy Gio. Daddy Gio. Ah! Teresa! What? Teresa! Jesus. Jesus. Ah, thank you, Jesus. Teresa! My God, my God, Jesus, I'm sorry, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, it is well with you, it is well with you, thank you, thank you, 